Hello friends, it's Julie Norman and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over all the planners that I have set up to go through currently for 2021. And by the way, my name is Julie Norman and I put out planner and planner related videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. I am so glad you joined me here today. Uh, it is a new week and new year-ish. We're still in the new year. And I am feeling better and I can finally do some things that I have been planning to do. That A lot of the books here are disc bound here. But these are more of my long-term books. And what I like to do for daily was I get towards this is the least used to the most used becomes traveler's notebooks. So let's go through, let's go through the least used to the most and I'm gonna put these aside. For my archive journal, I it basically is what it says. It's a journal that I go through and um, I put stuff, in, information in that I don't want to have other places that I'm done with or I might use later. And plus, for example, I've got some old things here that I might reuse again. And my Silk and Saunders, my old ones, I want to keep those um, in case I want to refer back to them. I've got some old projects um, and my old contact list. Oh, by the way, if you notice things look different, it's because we're at my desk today because I needed more room. I have much more room. You can't see it off camera, but I do. Um, and that's why my, my other little table is really small. So that is the archive journal. And then after that, I have this journal. And this one is a, it's a project journal, current things that I want, I might need, that's not archived, they're still active, but I don't use them more than maybe once or twice a month. So one of the things that is, that I'm going through is called a one room project, and I mentioned it before, where I am trying to have um, all of the things that I own and responsible for in one room so I can be more simplified. And, you know, I might take you along some of those journeys journey on that because it's kind of becoming more in my mind. Um, I've got some balance sheets for my business, some lists, and other such things in here. Active but not totally archived on that one. So the next one we have that I don't use every day, maybe not every week, but this one is my wellness journal, and I did do a video going through the process of this, and I am tracking a lot more. I have the wellness appointment notes from when I go to the doctor. I have a log. I can show you a little bit of the log, and because I've shown you this before, where I have these trackers, and they started with Silk and Sound. I really like that method. Oops, sorry. I should just hit my tripod. And... And then when I'm done with them, because right now I keep them in my current traveler's notebook, in the back of my current notebook right here. It's just a sheet like that that's just tucked in here. And when I'm done, then I put them in my wellness log so I can look at them at a glance. There's that and that, and the next one will go here. And I have, I put some autoimmune stuff in here too. And you know, I used to show you this monthly, but you know, every month you don't really need to see all of these. So I just thought I would recap them for the year. And I would love to hear how many journals and notebooks and planners you're using too. Because I'm at my desk, it's dark in here. So I apologize for the shadows. It's just um, not by the window, but that's, you know, if I want space, this is what you get. So this is my big autoimmune journey journal, which I showed about planning goals and that I am done down with my first week and I will link either above or below more information about this. We don't need to recap it, but I'm going to start putting more recipes in here that I have found that I like. I have been kind of winging the cooking. So far it's working out okay. Although sometimes I walk around the house <laughs> saying, I want to have a cookie, but that's a whole different story. Okay, the next one we have here that I am going to get back into, I haven't done much with this since I set up for NaNoWriMo in November, so the last two months I've had very little energy, a lot of brain fog. I haven't felt like writing, this is by, my, by the way, my writing notebook but with all my information, so I'm going to re-go through this and then I'm going to revive that as well for this year. Now the next one I have is... You may not have seen this one before, but this is my YouTube journal. This, yes, this is upside down. I will cover that up later. It's just re reusing these covers. These are Happy Planner covers. 
And one of the things I started to do is index things of what my subjects are so I can at a glance see what was the subject and what was my postscript. And I haven't finished that. And then I've got like some produ production checklists I'm going to work on because uh, sometimes I forget to go back and do things, video ideas. So I just set this up basically. And I have some notes here too of what, like my video for one year in a travelers notebook. You know, I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, I think that's better. I was a little zoomy here because I was felt like far away from, from the notebook that like you can't see what's going on. But not like you need to read these notes because I've already done the video, but I put the, the notes for my, my uh, videos and my ideas coming up. And yes, I have Breaking Up with Planet Perfect. Here's a preview of my notes. Yes, I am still working on that one but I just have not had the brain capacity to finish it because it's going to take a little bit more because I know there's going to be people who disagree with me, but I guess that's the way things go, isn't it? So next thing that I have is something I just showed you a little bit in my previous video when I was having another need to be in, take naps all day, and that is my theme of the year notebook and this is just a traveler's notebook it is craft paper it's a wide size made by carpe diem and it's just blank paper giving myself the vision of how i want this year to go and i have these are my four big goals but then i broke it down a little bit more and as i go i'm going to break it down even farther i'm still working through this because like i said january is the perfect month to plan your year uh, you don't have a lot of expectations yet unless you're like a hockey mom or something and you're very active with those things but you're you have the lull of all the busyness gone from December and now you can sit and think okay how do I want this year to go now that I can finally reflect maybe the Christmas decorations are done you know you're all your duties and you have this oh, I'm done finally feeling. So that's why I work on that in January. And in February, things, I, you know, basically with the ramping up of Valentine's Day, I feel that that is more of a start of the year. And why not start your year with a holiday that celebrates marriage and love? Actually, Valentine's um, was all about marriage, not so much love. Um, well, <laughs> I guess you could separate those things, but sometimes they don't go together. Um, but anyway, the next thing that I have is another traveler's notebook. This one is in the narrow size, and I have had this one for quite a while, since 2019. This is my book's red log. Now, last year, I only read 88 books, and that is a low number for me. I usually do at least a 1,000, but... A 1,000. <laughs> Whoops. I usually do at least a 100, because the year before that, I did uh, 150. So there, uh, the reason why I think it's lower is that I didn't record all the audiobooks that I listened to this time. I don't know why, but sometimes I don't. And then another thing is that I am sorting through a lot of my uh, Kindle books, such as here on my desk, my Kindle. I have I love the old Kindle keyboard because it's I, I like the tactileness. But with the Kindle books, I have been weeding through all of the free books I have gotten over the last few years. And there's a lot of times where I won't finish the book. I'll start it a couple chapters and then I'll be like, nah, nope, I'm going to delete that one. So that's why there's a lot of books that I started to read or I skipped to the end, you know, just to find out what happened at the end. And there you go. So... And now here I'm on 2021. So I am not even to the middle. I'm a couple pages into the middle. So this will probably take me a few more years to finish through this book. Okay, the next one that I use every day, but once a day, is my scripture copy notebook. And this one is another traveler's notebook. Well, it's Erin Condren. So technically they call it the Petite folio or pretty planner I know but there is basically a notebook insert and this is kind of the a5 size it's slightly different but from the a5 but it's close enough to me and I have a video series about copying scripture by hand and so just you know I have finally into Leviticus look at that although it's kind of boring guys I my mind wanders when I do this book one chapter at a time and I will get through it. So, 
the last one that that I do is this is my everyday carry this is a traveler's notebook it is the Carpe Diem cover I have a video where I unboxed this and it is the uh, wide size and it is a plasticky type color cover um, someday I will get another leather but leathers are a little bit more heavy um, and I like the flexibility of these and wipeability. So what I have inside today is I have my matchbook calendars. So this is January, February in this one. And when I'm done with the week, I tear it off. And I have this tucked in the front. And this will take me all the way through... Ooh, I have a blank page. I didn't finish this. <laughs> Good thing I peeked through here. Oh, you know what happened? Is I had extras. Oh, God. I finished August, so I can go through all the way through the end of August, but I had some extra pages on the end, and I must have just stapled them in. I thought it seemed a little bit more bulky, so I'm going to tear those out and push those together. Now, it, if you're going to do something like this, the tip that one of my one of our viewers said is to put washi tape on here. So I will put washi tape on here, but not, not right now because I can't get my drawer open because my tripod is covering it. But I'll, uh, but you just put a little washi tape on it and, it and it protects your pockets from getting torn up. So I will do that after this. This is my uh, daily flow of how I want my, my tasks to go today. And I have changed it up a little bit because I'm not doing as much as I used to. Oops. What I'm doing is basically this is my day flow right now instead of this. Just because then I can be all... One, one of the things that irritates me about how I made this is that how um, the pocket sizes are different. So I wanted to have these pockets are uniform. Decided right now I'm just going to use this. So, you know, I already unloaded the dishwasher. I didn't write today. I'm... So, what next thing I have to do is switch the laundry, because I do forget the laundry. I don't know about you, but I forget it's spinning down. I have a basement one. Cleaning task, you know, I'm not going to do that. get that to that today. Finish laundry, record video, and edit. I have to keep that because I know I'm doing it. A special project, probably not. But that's what I'm doing, is right now, um, I'm just turning them around when I'm done. And then I have to check my coop after I talk with you, do my meal prep. I think I'm going to make meatballs. What's for dinner at your house? Not meatballs. Meatloaf. Gosh, I thought brain fog was gone. And then the evening I'll do the dishwasher run and keep the kitchen clear. I'm finally feeling better, guys. And of course, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm going to overdo it because I'm feeling better. Here's a little preview of something I'm going to share later. But I've got, I bought, purchased some Etsy printables. And this is my grocery list. Isn't that cute? With coffee beans on it. And then I'm writing in pencil because then I don't have to print it out every time and there's some things that are the same but um, if you have a printable it doesn't matter if you reuse it or not because you can print it as many times as you want but I'm going to review these printables so that is the first insert is my daily task to do and then I have my journal plan yeah, journal kind of planner here and this is something that I made it is a junk journal ish insert and in the front, I have my little menu, and I have, we are, this is, oh, I like that. This is from my Mr. Rogers calendar. This is my page a day, so I have this. And you'll notice as we go through that this right here is what I cut out for the, um, the days. And I really like how minimal this is compared to before when I had the Marie Inglebright. So it was like this. So it was bigger. And... Um, it is cuter, of course, but my style is going more towards this vintage junk journaling. So all I really need is this. And of course I could always write it out too, but whatever. And maybe I'll do that. But this isn't a whole thing about my notebook, but it's mostly journal ideas, thoughts, how the day went. And my I have a new sheet to record how I'm doing on my diet. Um, I am down a few pounds, guys. Of course that would happen if all you're eating are fruits, vegetables, and meat, right? That is that one. And then my final one in here is my archive. Is here is it's not really archive, but it's my long-term journal, which this one, this one will probably last me a month or two. This one will last me months. And I don't remember when I started this. Maybe you do because I had it in a video. And that kind of shows me what are my what, what's on my wish list. Um, what's my travel wish list? Wouldn't that be nice when that's back? And just kind of a my notes and stuff and and this is a 
the Tomo Tome River paper. And I really enjoy this paper. It's nice and thin, and I know there's a lot of fans of it because you've spoken up. And this is my first time trying it. I like it. It does ghost, but it doesn't bleed. can probably see that. So if ghosting is not your thing, this is not your paper. But if you don't mind it, and it's, it's lightweight, and it's kind of, it's got that crinkly feel, that papery feel that I really like. It has, it has a little life to it. And that is all right now that is in my everyday carry. That is the lineup for right now and when things change I will let you know. I'm just gonna line these up so you can see them. Now I'm gonna put them in size order because otherwise it kind of gets wonky here. So I would love to hear what you have lined up for 2021. We, you know, we're on a new year. New year but we have brought our same issues with us I and mean, that's all I'm gonna say on the subject. And unfortunately uh, even though things may are not as ideal for us as we would like, I hope that that working with your planners gives you a sense of peace and it's a good therapy. You know, let me pull this out while I'm talking to you. But I was reading an article about planning and how to, the act of writing out and using paper and pen or pencil, whatever you prefer, that this act of this, it gives us the peace and it actually helps us feel like everything around us that is circling around in our heads or in the world, we can process physically. And that is such a difference than doing it digitally. You know, if digitally is the only way you can do it, that's fine, I understand, I did that for years. But there is something about taking your pen and committing it to paper that connection of the whatever is going around you to making it solid. And there are a few reasons why this is so powerful, and I've alluded to this before, is that bringing everything that's around you in your head, around the world, what you're watching, your family, your friends, whatever, and making them in a more cohesive manner, funneling it down into the tip of your pen right here, guys. So that is where it all goes, and then it goes on the paper where you can process it physically. And that is the power of doing this. You can type it on a keyboard and that's fine, but I think it's more powerful when you are handwriting it and it because of that more of the motion. But, you know, if, if digital is your way to do it, that's fine too. Not only can you process and define things around you, but you can also take a look back and it can also be a historical value to you. This is my 2020 January book. I read. I try to read about the same date that I, I'm on from last year to this year. And right now I'm doing the same thing basically I did last year, which was setting up new routines, um, defining what I want to do this year. So there's not much has changed in that. And I can go back and say, oh, for the last five years, I've been trying to lose weight. You know, what, what, do I still need to do that or what needs to change or what? Or I can say, look at how far I've come in the last year, last five years, last 10 years. Say, wow, that was quite a journey that we've been on. And hopefully next year I can look back at this and say, gosh, look at how far I've been on. Another thing that journaling and planning helps with is it can be a creative outlet. Now, some of you may not want to make it so creative. You may not want to do stickers or washi or decorate or all you want to do is just write it out. That's fine. But for some of us, it becomes a creation. And especially as I've gotten into the junk journals and creating the little vignettes and things like, like this one, that it's been a little therapy just to sit down for maybe a half hour and figure out what stickers do I want to put on here to surround this and, you know, distressing the edges and those kinds of things. A little glue, a little paper, and voila, it's a little bit of physical therapy or mental therapy. So that is why journaling and planning by paper is so powerful in my opinion. And I am so glad to have come across it again. And I'm so glad that you're on this journey with me. I would love to hear what you get out of your planning and beyond just organizing your lists, your thoughts, your dates, how else does it help you? So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a joyful day. Goodbye. P.S. Postscript. 
I'm going to give you a little autoimmune protocol diet update. I have, like I mentioned, I have just finished my first week on this. And I do have a little video on this if you don't know what I'm talking about. It is basically an elimination diet for those who have autoimmune issues or other kind of issues where foods can be the trigger to flare-ups. Um, this first week, I'm going to admit to you guys, it was hard. I think that I had, I thought I had it all under control because I had already eliminated dairy and wheat and uh, also coffee. So there was three things that may be difficult to give up. But um, I, the whole week, um, I couldn't close my hand more like this. And right now I can, can close it this much now, which actually, it, there's a little pain when I do this, but I can actually do that. So I can actually grab things again. Um, this hand is always better. I don't know why, but my left side is always worse. I have had like hot flashes, which I haven't had much of, almost every day I've had a hot flash. What are the other symptoms? Oh, I've had like my achy joints and cold spots and all kinds of weird stuff going on. And I've been so tired last week that um, I was almost thinking, oh, just chuck it all and I'm just gonna have a donut. <laughs> but, but I didn't, because I read that the first week can be really hard. And you probably noticed in my videos that there wasn't a lot of energy going on either, and not a lot of as much content. And I did lose a few subscribers, and it's probably because I was going through fatigue and brain fog. That's just part of how it is. But today is marks the first full week, and I'm feeling so much better. I have some energy, and I have I'm not so tired, and now I feel like I can do all the things, but then I went and did dishes, and then I had to, like, sit down. So, but I, that's better than having to take a nap. So that is going good. I just have to remember why I'm doing this, and keep the focus on that. I just want to also say, I know that, like I mentioned, there are a lot of people who probably, or a few people who unsubscribed, which is fine. Like, last week was hard, but I'm, thank you so much for those of you all of you who have stuck with me through this, through this difficult time. I'm going to have weeks probably coming up where I may not be as uh, alert or as energetic, and I, but I will still try to get you content. I will also try to pre-record some videos to stick out there when I can too, but some days are going to be better than others, and I am encouraged to feel better after this week that I will have some better content for you. There are some things I've been percolating for a while that I haven't been able to put into a video form because going through all this stuff. I guess all that to say I appreciate each and every one of you. I wanted to let you know how I'm doing and hopefully next week if I give another update on this it will be good news again. So I am thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and have a joyful day. Goodbye.